We anticipate in the next 10 to 12 years, approximately 86 million Hispanics coming into the United States and 41 million Asians. You have been the majority minority for 400 years in this country. You're gonna get, you have been the number two population for 400 years. You're gonna get kicked out of being number two, you're gonna go down and become number four. Now, common sense, even a third grade education would tell you, if you didn't get anything when you were number two, you all jumped ahead of me, but anyway, you can guess what you're gonna get when you become number four. President Biden, do you support reparations? Look, let me, since I haven't spoken in this kind of chase, um, number one, the reason where the country are is because of immigration. We've been able to cherry pick the best from every single continent. The people who come here have determination, resilience. They are ready to stand up and work like the devil. We have 24 out of our 100 children in our school today is Hispanic. The idea that we are going to walk away and not provide every opportunity for them is that not only stupid and immoral, but it's bad for America. They are the future of America. In the past same time that America refused to give the Negro in the land, through an act of Congress, our government was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest which meant that it was willing to undergird its white peasants from Europe with an economic floor. But not only did they give the land, they built land-grant colleges with government money to teach them how to farm. This is what we are faced with. And this is the reality. Now, when we come to Washington, in this campaign, we are coming to get our checks. We are owed $104 trillion on the very low end, plus $735 billion recurring. This number does not include the cost of about 50 Black Wall Streets that were decimated, nor compound interest from 2017 when Sean D. Rochester's book, The Black Tax, was published, nor the cost of Black life, nor the cost of living increases, nor the war on drugs, nor the current day pandemic. The number I'm working with is for slavery, Jim Crow, and a crude ongoing systemic racism, oppression, and disadvantage in the country our ancestors built with their lives. Good evening on the West Coast. Good evening in the mountain. Good evening in the Central. Good evening on the East Coast. You know exactly who it is, family. Angela Nirvana, your hostess with the mostest on the Reparationist Perspective, bringing you those treatment hot topics and making the case for reparations, making the case for weaponizing our folks, socializing our suffering. Thank you so much for being here, family. Thank you. Facebook, thank you, ScrewTube, thank you, Twitter, and thank you, Twitter Space. I see you, family. The Rock, Rule Trackers, Nice CL, uh, Gwen XOXO, and over in Twitter Space, I see Detroit, Patty, Black, Perry. <laughs> Listen, y'all, it's going to be lit. I got so much to share with you guys about this upcoming film being released on the 16th of September. I am just over Hollywood forever distorting and hiding the truth of our never ending Holocaust in the country our ancestors built with their lives. Now, you guys know the rules. I need you guys in the chat to chat it up while I switch back and forth between making the case over here and i need uh for my twitter space when you feel so compelled you want to weigh in you want to share with my screw tube viewers my race book viewers uh, how you think and feel just let me know you're in the queue and you can bless the mic so now that those house rules are out the way let's get into it 
So we got this, the extraordinary Viola Davis, Oscar award winning, I do believe, Viola Davis, who's actually going to be starring in The Woman King. And it's problematic, family. It's problematic in the same way Harriet was problematic. I am so over Hollywood fictionalizing our never ending Holocaust because we've never been told the truth. We have had our history stripped of us. Many of us don't even know the line our ancestors originated from. You don't know where your line is from Africa. You don't know if you're foundational black, if you was already here before the Mayflower. We already don't have a clue. And the only Sheroes and heroes I've ever been taught about, and you guys can let me know if it's true for you, is the Martin Luther King Jr., the Rosa Park. They didn't even teach me Malcolm X in school. If it wasn't for my daddy, who was like a Black Panther around where I was raised, I would not know as much as I do about our history as I've learned because he taught it to me. So if you didn't have a conscious parent that was teaching you the truth of your people, you just don't really know how you got here. You don't understand why you're America's most hated. You don't understand why they're allowing things like Flint and Mississippi. And I think there's one more that just happened. Maryland, Baltimore. You don't understand how they are seeking to genocide us, to deny us our justice claim, to continue to give away our reparations and protections to everybody but those of us who built, whose ancestors built the entire infrastructure. You know that wealth that white folks and immigrants eat from. You don't understand what's happening. You know something inherently is wrong, but you can't quite put your finger on it if your people did not teach you the truth of your history. And now they're taking it a step further. Okay, they're taking it a step further. They've got the money to do it. Hollyweird can spread these lies akin to Harriet, how the bounty hunter, you know, annihilated a black accomplished woman. None of this happened during Harriet. Now they're talking about Harriet being a made up story. Like our history just constantly keeps being tampered with and the same is true when it comes to the woman king first of all we weren't kings okay yes they had these warrior women but they're not telling the truth about these warrior women and how they ended up protecting the king who not only had slaves but sold us into slavery I've already done some, something similar to this. Go to my archives at the Reparations Perspective on ScrewTube, where I unpack how Africans were fully involved and became wealthy off of trading our ancestors into slavery. And folks want to tell me, well, you just boycott. Well, me boycotting it clearly isn't enough. Just like if I were the only one to go out here and invoke a protest vote. It don't matter unless we reach critical mass. Okay, so I'm going to get into it and I'm going to share with you so you guys can make an informed decision about what you want to do with this particular version uh, that is untrue. So I'm looking at the Washington Examiner and I'm going to read you read some of this to you. Uh, until I get tired. Now, naturally, I'm going to comment in between. If you want to weigh in, Twitter space, raise your hand. Let me know you're there. The woman king conveniently ignores empire's slave-owning roots. Now, why is this so serious for me? Well, I learned that my ancestors were traded from Benin, which was Dahomey. Many of our ancestors did. You may not know that, but many of our ancestors were traded into slavery from Benin for guns, for all manner of things. But let's get into the article. This is dated 
July 13, 2022. And I'm going to share with you why I believe they're fully invested and in making this a black, white thing. Everything is political, family. Everything, everything, everything. That's first and foremost. So please understand that these movies are political. Before I get to reading, if you recall the pandemic, I don't know if you ever saw Contagion starring Gwyneth Paltrow and I think Matt Damon or somebody. That movie was done, I want to say, in 2011 or 2016. Don't quote me. You can look it up and you can watch this movie. It literally dealt with the pandemic that happened in a restaurant where folks was touching raw foods and carrying on. Okay, they literally, <laughs> when you look at Hollywood, you have to look at it with the lens of what they're trying to forecast as coming. Around 2011, I want to say 2011, they did this film, and I mean, all the way down to the wet labs. They showed you how this pandemic in the movie Contagion happened in a film. Fast forward to 2020, they're shutting the country down. So you have to understand that art is imitating life and forecasting what's to come. The same is true for the woman king. This whole propaganda, this whole agenda to masculinize women and make men more effeminate is to get them ready for a draft. Stay with me now. Stay with me. Uh, it's going to all make sense in the by and by. Everything's political. Let's get to the article. The Woman King is an upcoming historical epic piece centered on General Nan Naniska of the Dahomey Amazons of the Kingdom of Dahomey. It tells the tale of the valiant efforts of Naniska to fight off Europeans. To fight off Europeans, not Africans. Listen, who were intent on taking over Africa. But while the movie is advertised in its trailer as based on, oh, ads, y'all, hold on, powerful, true events, it seems to take great liberties with historical truths and facts, as is typically the woke left's way. Me speaking. So in an era of Trump still having so much relevance, what you see here are two things happening. I mentioned the first, the masculinization of our women and the effeminization of our men, our black men in particular, American freedmen in particular, this kind of role change, okay? And so what you see with the woke left, now that we're marching towards midterms, is them doing everything in their power to disparage the repugnant clans and calling them racist when all you see is the Democrats' ethno-genocidal plans for American freedmen in full effect. All you see is Abbott out of Texas taking these illegal immigrants that have been allowed to cross this border and dropping them off in our urban communities. What you see is Joe Crow giving, uh, asking Congress for 37 billion with a B, more dollars for more race soldiers to come into our communities to execute us by state sanction with impunity. Those $37 billion are not coming into our communities where there's this influx of immigrants to kill illegals. They are moving them in as they execute us, as they execute our poor. Now I'm giving you the real movie that I'm forecasting the real movie of what's going down right now. What you see is Joe Crow giving damn near a trillion dollars to Ukraine to fight Russia. You see him giving our reparations and protections 
to all the immigrants. You see them fighting to get these illegals the right to vote. You see in every democratically ran city where they're becoming a sanctuary state, sanctuary cities, putting the illegals up in, in, in four and five star hotels while they're leveling the homeless encampments where we are the majority, American freedmen, not the black immigrant. I've shared with you on many broadcasts how they're significantly more wealthy than American freedmen. And so now look at the perfect timing of the woman king and the, the lies. It's not that Europe didn't play a major role in this puckery, but this we know, right? We already know what the white man is capable of and what they do on a continuum in our never ending Holocaust. What our people don't know is that the white man learned how to mistreat us on the premise of how he saw our own people treat us. This is why, hold on one second. I see you dollar bill of the eight. I, I said yes to you to come to bless the mic just give me a second to land don't lose your thought keep your paper nearby okay keep your paper and pen nearby i gotta land what you see this is what is happening two months before we go to the polls and why is that because the new black media myself included <laughs> no matter how humble my viewership no matter how humble my subs, be sure to like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications, okay? Oh, let me wave my banner. I have forgot to wave my banner so I can grow. I'm at 1,050, I thank y'all. Lord knows. It's the little engine that could over here. But because we are leaning in on the Democrats and their not benign neglect, their intentional neglect of American freedmen who descend from U.S. chattel slavery. Now we're going to release the big woman king to show you how dreadful the Europeans are while totally excluding that the Europeans learned it from the Africans. You know those kings and queens that keep lying to you? Well, some of us did descend from that and some of us, you know, that's our line. That's very true because a lot of how we got here was tribal wars too. But how convenient to leave that out to paint the repugnant clans as the Dixiecrats that the Democrats truly are. They can't drink water in Mississippi, now Maryland. Everybody is supposed to be boiling this dirty water. My God, it's atrocious in Jackson, where who is? American Freedmen. You don't see this going on in white neighborhoods, ever. Flint was the same way majority black. Now Baltimore, where my people stay, is definitely majority black. But this is the way they set us up. They're going to genocide us one way or another. And the fastest way to do it is through that water. Okay, let's get back to the text. I had to make, oh, Dollar, uh, okay, you haven't raised your hand. When you're ready to speak, go ahead, bless the mic. What's up, sir? This DJ right here, I'm just over here chilling. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, you know I'm on a roll, DJ. You got more IDs than the law should allow. Well, let me know if you want to yeah. weigh in, baby. I gotta, I gotta keep flowing. Go what? ahead, get, 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 get your boss, get your boss. Go ahead, I need my money. <laughs> okay, so back to the text. By all available accounts, based on synopsis and trailers available to the public, the movie is cinematic, fake news, and a disinformation machine. Now, me speaking, there's some merit to this, I think. Now, I've not dug deep enough, but it, it appears that the British were trying to get Dahomey to stop trading us into slavery. I've not done that part. I may have to come back to a part two. It takes a few hours just to pull certain narratives together to make my point. So I'm going to dig a little deeper to see what happened with these Brits and, and if they were really truly trying to stop it or were they trying to take it over? Who knows? Everybody's nefarious and everybody's guilty. But yes, they did leave this vital, important piece out. The woman king, back to the text, the woman king seems to ignore blatantly the brutality 
and savagery of the kingdom of Dahomey, the empire from which Viola Davis' main character, General Naniska, hails. Instead, it features the typical left-wing propaganda and tropes of the evil white oppressive colonizer coming for the utopian Africans in the kingdom of Dahomey. Okay? And he's right about that. Like I said, midterms are coming and what they want more than anything, family, what they want more than anything is for American freedmen to continue showing to the polls to vote blue, no matter damn who, to your own replacement and to your own peril. Now, that's not just information. That's happening in real time. Folks running around here talking about dim down the ballot. Uh, Look at where we are doing that dumb dick, uh, bullshitty the last election cycle in the fight of our lives to prevent from becoming the permanent bottom cast. And like Dr. Claude Anderson said, we can't fight everybody and we have no friends. So yes, this is this is exactly what they're doing. Uh, painting the evil white oppressive colonizer that both parties are, even the ones in blackface, even the POC ones that they're bringing into this country because this country is not interested in bringing in immigrants who want to take to the streets like they did for George Floyd. That's not the kind of immigrant they're bringing up into this country. They're bringing the immigrants in here that are seeking to replace you with your own tax dollars because we ain't got no representation, but we got taxation for damn sure. So that's exactly the plan is to bring them into our communities, not in qualified immunity, give more money to the race soldiers to execute us by state sanction. Unarmed black men, women and children. And it's already happened. It's happening all over the country, but we've gone from 17 to 3 percent in the state of California, while the Hispanics are now 40 percent or greater. You'd be hard pressed to go to a black community and see your own people. They're not working there and they are barely around to shop because they've been pushed to the south. With our tax dollars, with legislation designed to legislate us right about the state. Back to the text. Instead, it features, okay, let me move down. I got so much to cover. The plot is a familiar one. Under attack, it's up to the underdog heroes of the Dahomey Amazons to fight off the big bad Europeans. A trailer for the movie features the lines, the Europeans wish to conquer us. They will not stop until the whole of Africa is theirs. We must fight back for our people. But in reality, Dahomey was an empire built on the backs of African slaves. My ancestors, some of y'all's ancestors. The kingdom used conquest and slave labor, two major red flags for the rabbit left social justice indoctrinators for its own benefit. At least they are red flags when uh, it was white people. They are red flags when it was white people who did them. Hold on one second. Did I see a hand somewhere? I thought I saw a hand. Okay, not yet. Let me go back to that. The kingdom used conquest and slave labor two major red flags for the rabbit left social justice indoctrinators for its own benefit at least they are red flags when it was white people who did them the kingdom of dahomey was a strong african military power that attacked and imperialized its african neighbors hold on one second i'm coming to you i see a request Just a second. I'll get to you guys in the chat in a second. I'm over here reading, okay? Hang in there. Woo, child, the ghetto. The kingdom of Dahomey was a strong African military power that attacked and imperialized its African neighbors. And you see this to this day. All the tribal wars going on over there. 
And now they brought this war to our own shores and we welcome them with open arms. And look at the puckery happening all throughout the social media spaces from all these groups hating on American freedmen, wishing us dead, all manner of diabolical thing. Not all, but you see what's happening in these spaces and the new black media reporting on it. It captured and enslaved the men, women, and children to enhance its wealth and luxuries, me speaking. So when you see Africans that come into this country who want to sit up here and act like it's okay to take work out of the mouths of American freedmen and American freedmen roles, you're looking at those who more than likely descend from slave traders. Because as you see, this country does not allow poor Haitians or poor black anything up into this country they'll take the poor uh latinos all day every day they'll take them okay they they, they they'll take them but if, if if you're poor and black you're not welcome here if you're poor and black you are not welcome here you're gonna have to go back and so when you see these africans pretending like they pulled themselves up by their bootless straps and why don't we do the same thing they are liars they are here to replace us in every branch of government in every industry they've got more education as our government miseducates us and allows genocide in these environmentally racist communities and tenement housing that they redlined us into. I see you, Chris. I'm coming to you momentarily. You see this happening in real time with your own vote. This is what we're voting for. They're coming in here. They've already got money. And then we become the Akatas. We're the ones that are disparaged. We're the ones that are fighting for reparations as they believe they are owed a portion of it even though they descend from slave traders many of them do and will not tell you that go look at the archives i've already addressed this and so these are the ones that became wealthy from trading us into slavery and yes they, that does not absolve the europeans but africa did it first back to the text it brutally tortured and murdered some of their slaves while others it willingly sold to Europeans in the transatlantic slave trade. Whatever slaves weren't sold or executed worked on the Dahomey Kingdom's royal plantations in Africa. Go ahead, Chris. Bless the mic. Hey, how y'all doing? I'm great, thanks. I'm good, good, good. Hey, so I'm currently in West Africa, uh, the Gambia specifically. Um, but I'm a Black American, you know what I'm saying? The center of uh, slave shed cropers or um, whatever. This is sort of the third time. Um, man, it's crazy over here. It's crazy over here. Y'all said, uh, a lot of, some of y'all should come over here. It's so much money over here, man. I just want to, oh, my thing is, I know the political thing. Um, I, I don't fuck with the, uh, the, the immigrants, not even just black ones, like, more so Hispanic, because I don't fuck with Hispanic right now. But, like, um, more so the majority of immigrants, because they be undermining niggas that's been there for years or whatever. I just want to say, like, man, there's so much money over here. You just got to tap in if you come over here. Because the niggas that's over here is a little different. Not even a little different. They're way different than the niggas that uh, come over to America. Like, America let coons over. But they be solid niggas, man. They be solid niggas over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Let's know how, like, all the resources, a lot of the resources over here, you could pop in and get that too. This is how you move, though, but I just want to say that. It's, 
you can still you can still build a pipeline. You can still build a pipeline and make money over here. That's what I'm saying. You ain't got hate on all of them. And then these bitches too bad. I can't hate on all of them. They be too bad for me. I'm not about to hate on all of them motherfuckers for real. But you need like, yeah. You can make some money over here. That's all I wanted to say, yo, y'all. If you just wanted to open up your your mindset and just make money, at least. That's it though. Well, thank you so much for blessing the mic, Chris. You know, um, yeah, I'm sure that you can make money in Africa. I don't hate on Africans. I have quite a few black immigrant friends. I've dated black immigrants. That's not that's not my stick. I'm here to make the case for our reparations, and I'm here to make the case for weaponizing our votes and socializing our suffering. And I'm trying to find my brave comrades that understand what's happening in this country. I'm gr- I'm glad yeah. that. Go ahead. Well, I apologize. That's okay. No, I agree. I agree with you 100%. Um, I agree with you. You know what I'm saying? Like I say, I, the, 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 the niggas, the cool niggas that be in America, they be undermined niggas. Sheila Jackson, I think she's Jamaican. It's a whole rack of little niggas that's not really from America that be doing a, a whole rack of dumb shit. Like, yeah, they crazy. No bullshit. Um, You gotta get the niggas out of there. I never voted before in my life. But yeah, the niggas who vote, man, get them up out of there, man, because they don't got our best interest at all. You feel me? Don't hey, don't get it twisted. I want me a reparations check. I'ma flip the shit out that motherfucker if I ever get it. I'm gonna flip Watch that your bitch. language. I'm live on screw tube who loves to shut me down. <laughs> I know I'm in Twitter space, but screw tube shut me down for a month for speaking radically about okay. the pandemic and about the Democrats, they don't like it so just your language any reason they that, just pick uh-huh. a reason to shut me down i apologize that. um but yeah like yeah it's, it's, it's I, I i feel y'all how y'all feel it I, I feel the same way luckily like where i'm from in america i don't be dealing with like um uh, all them like immigrants like that I don't be dealing with them, uh, but we. I think that the downfall of Black America has been we always looked out for everybody else. We put everybody before us, and that's even though these people out here they mess with me, they would never put me before their own ethnic group ever. Ever, ever, ever. They will never do that. It don't matter how much you see. You can look at my picture. I got their clothes on and everything. No matter if they got their clothes on, the coopy on, none of that. They don't, man, they, got, they, they don't care about none of that. So what I'm saying is you got to look out for your own. Curry, your own ethnic group. You know what I'm saying? But you can still make money one or another. And, what part of West Africa they, are you in, Chris? Oh, I'm in a country called the Gambia. Did you say Gambia? Yeah. 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 Well, that's cool. Well, let me let me have you mute, young man. And thank you so much for blessing the mic. But I got to get a couple more uh, articles thank in. You. Thank you so much. You. I appreciate you. Thanks. All the best to you over in Gambia, in the Gambia. Okay, so um, if you can mute, mute your mic, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, family, listen. Um, this is what I know. This is what I love. And it's not that I'm opposed to moving to Africa, but I shouldn't have to. Uh, that's how I feel about that. I should be able to uh, live peaceably and very wealthy in the country my ancestors built with their lives. And that's what I'm fighting for as are many of you that are in the space and on screw tube and race book most of you are my comrades and uh you understand where we're at with this uh and it's i'm not disparaging anyone that wants to go to africa and make money 
Um, I'm I'm strictly dealing with uh, what's happening in this country and what we need to do. I happen to believe that we are on the bottom because we didn't have the courage of our ancestors who knew when to pivot from the repugnant clans to the Democrats for civil rights. And we've just been doing this for 60 years without a strategy. So I'm trying to invoke one. And you take from it what you will, just like with this boycott. Listen, you don't have to like not you you if you go to watch it uh you know at least know the truth at least know the truth and teach the truth one of my comrades uh, i i didn't get permission to use her name uh, so i'm not going to say her name but she actually is going to show up to the movie houses and pass out flyers about uh the truth she's going to print the truth of the dahomey and, and these women and how treacherous they were beheading us in the whole nine yard. I'm going to read you a segment shortly after this uh, article from uh, Zora Neale Hurston's Barracoon, which I highly recommend you get on Audible or you order the book to have in your library. But it deals with the last uh, black person that came over on the Cotilda from the Dahomey village into the uh into america with three k's and he's talking about the dahomey that hollywood is now glamorizing because there are several agendas going on and i'm going to impart what my third eye what my rep my reparationist perspective is telling me what's going on right now in addition to the midterms but let me get to the text so i can get through these articles and go see what my screw tube audience is saying about this because they can't see me right now Okay, so back to the text. What? Okay, we did that part. Let's go down. Additionally, the kingdom of Dahomey was a willing accomplice in the transatlantic slave trade. A fact at least the trailer of the movie seems to ignore. Perhaps the movie will ultimately reveal this. My assumption is if it does, it will merely be in passing and not a significant plot point of the film. Like I mentioned prior, we saw this happen with Harriet. Now, folks want to come for me talking about, well, did you ask for a, a, a boycott of the Wakanda movie, the Black Panther? Did you ask for a boycott of coming to America? First of all, Wakanda ain't real. Secondly, if they're not real, that means they didn't trade my ancestors into the worst heinous chattel slavery known to the born world and is by and large responsible for the descendants of U.S. chattel slavery, the American freedmen descendants of U.S. chattel slavery in being in a fight constantly, enduring a never ending Holocaust because that's what's happening to us over here. And it's not okay that a few of us are okay and the majority of us are suffering with the highest rates of homelessness, unemployment and underemployment after what our ancestors endured so that we could enjoy the fruits of being American citizens. That shouldn't be an exemption for about 15% of us. Back to the text. Perhaps, okay, my assumption is if it, okay, sorry. It seems to focus more on General Naniska trying to fight off French colonizers than the people who were murdered, captured, and enslaved under Naniska. It's fine to want to make historical epics that focus on African figures. Yet if Hollywood starts telling more of these stories, then it needn't shy away from the truth. And the harsh reality is whether the left-wing elitists and syncophants in Hollywood want to admit it or not, the African slave trade started in Africa because of Africans and was used to make African kings very wealthy. The truth will make the wokest of the woke cringe, but the fact remains that African kings and queens used slaves to enhance their lives and profits the way many plantation owners did in North America. If the screenwriter and director of The Woman King have any integrity, they will detail these facts. But given what I have seen in the trailer, I'm not holding my breath. 
It seems to be the latest left-wing propaganda's historically revised movie with the theme, white man bad, everyone else good. And I absolutely agree. With that being said, let's talk about Barracoon, the power of the untold slave narratives. Now, in Barracoon, Zora Neale Hurston challenges the American public's narrow view of the African continent, the transatlantic slave trade, and the diasporic cultures that came as a result of it. And I'm reading from the Atlantic. Like, where's the date? October 1st, 2018. This talks about the book. And then I'm going to share you an excerpt uh, from uh, Cujo, the last slave in this country that this book chronicles what he experienced in Dahomey. Pre-colonial Black history is often reduced to a troubling binary. Africans as a uniformly subservient arm of the triangular trade in Africa through the lens of monarchies like ancient Egypt and Haile Selassie's Ethiopia. Consider Nas's 2003 song, I Can, his highest charting single to date, which was widely lauded for its uplifting message. To open his last verse, he pleads with black children to look to the distant past for inspiration. Before, quote, before we came to this country, we were kings and queens, never porch monkeys. Incomplete and romanticized readings of history have resulted in a fanatical, monolithic image of Africa, or worse, a dismissal of the rest of the continent as a backwards land that colonizers rightfully raided. Both myopic narratives prevent people from exploring the continent's full range of societies, not only spurring resentment among African Americans and African and Caribbean immigrants, but also promoting ignorance of the shared cultural elements that survived the journey across the Atlantic. And this is what Hollywood loves to participate in for the democratic agenda. They don't do this to the Jewish Holocaust. They only fictionalize and distort the truth of American freedmen and our heinous chattel slave labor, that of our ancestors, and what we're currently living as our never ending Holocaust. Back to the text. Zora Neale Hurston's Barracoon widens the scope of this default, reductive rendering of history through form and function after being kept in the Allen Locke Collection at Howard University's Moreland Spinyard Research Center for more than half a century, Barracoon was released to the public in May. Hurston experienced considerable difficulty in getting the book published in 1931 and in 2016, Lois Hurston Gaston, the author's grandniece, announced on behalf of the Zora Neale Hurston Trust that releasing the book publicly was especially timely given that our country is continuing to focus on our racial divide and the consequences of slavery. The book is a culmination of three months worth of conversations between Hurston and Cujo Lewis, Ne Aluale Kosola, the last living survivor of the transatlantic slave trade. In 1860, at the age of 19, Kosolo was kidnapped by inhabitants of the who? Dahomey Kingdom and brought to the barracoons, which is barracks used to temporarily hold enslaved Africans in Wida, a city on the coast of modern day Benin, where my ancestors descend from. Though the slave trade in the United States was officially outlawed in 1808, Casola and about 110 others were captured and brought to Mobile, Alabama on Captain William Foster's ship, Clotilda. Their captors were prosecuted and later had the charges dropped. Less than five years after landing in Alabama, emancipation arrived 
as the Confederate Army surrendered in Virginia, which American freedmen helped them to succeed. Okay, they helped these uh, white supremacist glacier donkeys on both sides of the aisle win that war and ergo our emancipation. Okay, back to the text. Once he saved enough money to buy a land parcel, Casola, with the assistance of another freedman, you see, me speaking, freedman is constitutional family. I love our other identifiers, but freedmen will get you paid. Okay, this is what they're referring to him as, a freedman. And former Dahomey nobleman founded Africatown, Alabama. And that's still existing to this day. As a matter of fact, me speaking, uh, one of the gentlemen that was in my thread on Twitter when I was fighting with Viola Davis, well, not really fighting with her because it takes two to fight. She wouldn't dignify me with a response when I was asking questions if it told the truth about how Africa enslaved and traded us as they pretend not to know how heinous chattel slavery was. Is that being disclosed in this movie? I kept asking, and a gentleman from Africatown is threatening a lawsuit now. Yep, against Hollywood in this movie's distortion of what happened to us, our ancestors, okay? So Africatown still exists and he is from that town. And he was in that thread, getting it in, putting in work, helping me to go to task uh, Viola Davis. Founded Africatown, Alabama, an isolated community of former slaves that sought to preserve their roots and culture. His story as told by Hurston eliminates the alienating and lonesome existence of freed slaves during Reconstruction. Unlike many published slave narratives which focus on Great Britain's colonies, Casola's account offers a panoramic look at the machinations of the slave trade, the shared greed that enabled one of society's most heinous crimes against humanity. Oh yeah, Africa, you owe reparations too. Back to the text. Casola decried the instability of militaristic, top-heavy societies like Dahomey, the widely feared African kingdom that facilitated the conquest of neighboring tribes and nations and eventually negotiated with slavers from Alabama. Quote, he keep making raids to grabby people. I'm trying to read in his dialect. Casola told, tells Hurston of the king of Dahomey, which was a man, to sell so the people of Dahomey don't have no time to raise gardens and make food for themselves. Casola names the power players at each level of society including those serving as go-betweens. The Dahomey's word changers or translators, the KRU crew boys, master seafarers who migrated from the Liberian hinterlands, made a living through fishing and trade, and shuttled millions with an M, millions of Africans to slave ships. Mm. Casola's story broadens the popular narrative, showing that the lust for dominance that sparked the slave trade was not endemic to the colonizers. Me speaking, the colonizers learned it from us. I, them, rather, not us. My ancestor was sold. I'm sorry. Just give me a breath. Let me just. Oh, Lord, the ghetto. Oh, the lies, the lies, the lies. Okay. Let me go back. Oh. That's, uh, it wasn't endemic to colonizers and that West African societies were often active participants. The Dahomey reign serves as a crude reminder that excellence 
usually exist at the expense of others calling into question the prioritizing of stories about African kingdoms like ancient Egypt. Kosola illustrates the multiplicity of African societies, making it known in the first chapter, quote, my people had no ivory by their door. Barracoon shines largely due to Hurston's theory that when it comes to African subjects in America, objectivity has been permanently compromised to effectively and accurately research a community like Africatown to profile a subject with a story as compelling as Kosola's would be nearly impossible without immersion into the community itself, Hurston believed. Journalists had previously interviewed Kosola, but none received the level of access Hurston did by breaking the objective observer, the objective observer format with gifts of food, hams and peaches and blue crab, along with reported compensation in the form of stipends provided by the philanthropist, philanthropist Charlotte Osgood Mason, who also funded Hurston's research. Hurston gains Casola's trust and corroborates his accounts with historical record, not to verify or to confirm accuracy, but to serve as a testament to his incredible memory. In their short time together, he rattles off native rites of passage, marriage customs, and community-based justice systems at the ready, even when the process of recollection elicits violent flashbacks. Hurston appended her research with Casola's childhood memory games and fables, rituals of re remembrance, honoring generations that surely wouldn't have shown up in academic publications. Hurston also makes a point to leave Casola's imperfect English intact. His story is transcribed almost entirely in dialect. Since he never learned to read nor write in English, Casola leans directly into the role of griot. Hurston gives him space to be subject, narr narrator, and protagonist alike. The complete work produces a harrowing image of a man who, in Hurston's words, was, quote, too deeply a pagan to fear death, but full of trembling awe before the altar of the past. With this native way of life still in mind, Casola sat at a devastating crossroads upon becoming a free man, torn between the daunting prospect of returning to Africa or piecing together some semblance of personhood in America through marriage, religion, and community. Quote, we meet together and we talk he tells Hurston, we say we from cross the water, so we go back where we come from. We work hard and try save our money, but it's too much money we need, so we think we stay here. We don't try to get no king, cause nobody amongst, among us ain't born no king. After he married, Priscilla underwent a steam engine accident that left him disabled and unable to work. But more tragically, he endured the deaths of his wife and all six of his children. Reminds me of Job. He weighed his options, given neither compensation for the accident nor reparations for the slave labor he provided, and decided to begin the process of maroonage the creation of Africatown, a place of refuge and memory. Native to Eatonville, Florida, a similarly maroon Southern community, Hurston considered African-American folk tradition, quote, the greatest cultural wealth on the continent. She struggled with the ideal of the new Negro, which placed an emphasis on excellence, dignity, or exceptionalism 
as a means to subvert old stereotypes. Sounds familiar. We're dealing with a lot of that in our fight for reparations. In the 1920s, during the Harlem Renaissance, in which Barracoon was written, Casola's origin story and vernacular English were shameful to no small portion of middle-class Black Americans. Wouldn't that, me speaking, isn't that true of today? Do you see the niggerati showing up anywhere? Do you see the CBC speaking out against our never-ending Holocaust, whether it be state-sanctioned executions or you know, lead in the water or the highest rates of unemployment, underemployment and homelessness or being redlined into environmentally racist communities and tenement housing? Are they speaking up on behalf of the least of us, which is a good, what, at least 50, 60 percent or greater? No, but you can see them sitting up here defending, you know, their, their uh, righteous indignation and fake outrage over the little girls at Sesame Place who were discriminated against. Or you'll see Sheila Jackson Lee fighting for money for what was it recently? Pakistan. Or they're fighting for the illegals to come here and seek refuge before making us whole. They can find a million ways to spend our reparations, but on those of us who descend from U.S. chattel slavery, who are fifth class in the country our ancestors built with their lives. Back to the text. Compared to narratives in which slaves obtain freedom through an unlikely stroke of fortune or by overachieving, Casola's journey from Africa to Alabama offers little to be read as political agenda. There were no white abolitionists who could be seen as saviors. Casola didn't earn his freedom through literacy or religion, nor did he escape through a concerned revolt. Though he did convert to Christianity in America, co-founding what is now Union Missionary Baptist Church in Africa Town, Casola became his own free man through simple communal reflection and remembrance. In Barracoon, Hurston illuminates his resilience without romanticizing it as necessary in the search for self-realization. Stories of maroon spaces like Eatonville in Africa Town have been largely, hold on guys, have been largely erased from American memory and nearly extinguished through institutional neglect. Hurston challenges the nation's narrow view of the African continent, the transatlantic slave trade, and the diasporic cultures that came as a result of it. Casola's account grants readers a three-dimensional recollection of African-American history, free of lionization or fantasy, a sobering lens through which to process a rich, very legacy. That was Tori Threadcraft, a freelance writer based in New York in the Atlantic. Now I wanna read you one more thing before I get to my people over in ScrewTube. Y'all keep chatting, I'll be right there. This is the last piece I wanna to read to you and we can uh, view your comments and share with my Twitter space what you guys have to say about it. Cause what I know about y'all is I'm sure y'all are tearing the keys up right now. So shout out to another one of my comrades for posting an excerpt from uh, Barracoon. And I'm just going to read you this tiny snippet because I've already given you a lot of history. But this is dealing directly with why I am imploring upon us to boycott the woman king. Casola described to Hurston the mayhem that ensued in the pre-dawn raid when his townspeople awoke to Dahomey's female warriors who slaughtered them in their days. Those who tried to escape through the eight gates that surrounded the town were beheaded. 
by the male warriors who were posted there. Casola recalled the horror of seeing decapitated heads hanging about the belts of the warriors and how on the second day, the warriors stopped the march in order to smoke the heads. Oh Lord, please just let me finish. <sighs> Through the clouds of smoke, he missed seeing the heads of his family and townspeople. Quote, it is easy to see how few would have looked on that site too closely, wrote a sympathetic Hurston. And this is in his own words. They march all night long and we in the bed sleep. We don't know nothing. About daybreak, when the folks that sleep get wake with the noise, when the people of Dahomey break the great gate. I not woke yet, I still in bed. I hear the gate when they break it. I hear the yell from the soldiers while they chop the gate. Therefore, I jump out the bed and look. I see the great many soldiers with French gun in the hand and the big knife. They got the women soldiers too, and they run with the big knife and make noise. They catch people and they saw the neck like this with the knife. Then they twist the head so, and it come off the neck. Oh, Lord, Lord. I see the people get killed so fast. The old ones, they try run away from the house, but they dead by the door. And the women soldiers got their head. Oh, Lord. That was a puckin' lot. My ancestors were spared that, but died daily in this country because of what Africa did. Before the colonizers, the white supremacist glacier donkey colonizers, there was Africa and what they did to us, which is not being taught and then you've got Hollywood destroying the truth. And you've got Africans running around this country calling us a kata as they come right over the tops of us to become more wealthy than us, to assume position over us while being ungrateful, calling us names, telling us that we're shiftless, lazy, no good and no count if we would just pull ourselves up by our bootless straps. We wouldn't be in the fight of our lives to prevent from becoming permanent bottom cast as the anchor of this country's capitalism with three Ks. They are complicit by and large in this country. They descend from this kind of slave trading. While they wanna constantly point a finger at the white colonizers, four fingers are pointing back to them. And there's agendas here. First is to make us believe that it's only white folks that hate us when we've got POC white supremacists in this country and we've got black white supremacists in this country. And they're not just black immigrants. They're black American freedmen descendant of US shadow slavery who are selling us out for the bag on a regular basis. And the part two to that is the fact that they want black women to pretend and behave as if we don't need our black men, as if we don't need our black husbands, as if we don't need our black fathers, because that's who they're after. They carry the seed. 
There would be no line without the black men. So they're making men of our women and women of our men. And we keep showing up to the polls to vote blue no matter who to our own replacement in peril. And folks want to look at me crazy when I push a protest vote for closed border and reparations candidates only party be damned. The other part to that agenda to making us believe the queens are the king is to get us ready to be drafted into the third world war. Let me read this to you. I'm coming, screw tube. I'm coming. I promise I'm coming. Keep the chat, Liddy. I'll be there. This is the last one, I promise. This article, what is this? This is roll call. I can't remember the date, but I remember reading this bullshiggity. And I'm seeing a trend in these Hollywood movies where they're making women badass and kick ass and like they're men and building them up like they're men and making them fight like they're men and making them murder like they're men. For the past 10 years, I've seen a trend from since way back like G.I. Jane. The woman king is designed to do the same thing. Congress moves toward requiring women to register for the draft. The Democrats appear united in wanting to change while repugnant clans are split. For over a hundred years, young this is dated October 5th, 2021, by Mark Satter. It's in, if you want to look it up, rollcall.com. For over 100 years, young men have registered for the draft. Now Congress is poised to make a historic change for gender equality by requiring women for the first time in American history to do the same. But while support for the change is bipartisan, Congress is leaving the details for later. That's the easy thing to do, considering the military hasn't drafted anyone since the Vietnam War, and it's possible it never will need to again. Lies. They're at war right now with Russia through Ukraine neo-Nazis. They're paying for that war right now because it's their war. They want to occupy the borders of Russia. And I'm asking you, would it be okay for Russia to occupy the Mexico border where they got all these illegals breaking the law and welcoming welcoming them into the country and putting them up into four-star hotels. Would that be okay for Russia? But if a crisis of monumental proportions were to emerge, the logistics of incorporating women into a much larger military could prove complicated. Would drafted women be expected to serve in combat roles? And if not, what would their roles be? Would they be housed with men? It appears that neither Congress nor the Pentagon has thought that through. Still, including the House version of the Fiscal 2022 National Defense Authorization Act, which that chamber passed last month, was an amendment by Pennsylvania Democrat. Christy Houlihan and Florida Repugnant Clan, Michael Waltz, that will require women to sign up with the Selective Service, a government agency that keeps records of Americans eligible for a draft. And the Senate Armed Services Committee also included language that will require women to register when it marked up its version of the NDAA in July, although the full Senate has not yet taken it up. Proponents of the change see the move as a victory for women's rights. Quote, equity is important. Yeah, because women are just fighting for the right to die on the front lines of this racist ass country with three Ks. Hulahan told CQ 
roll call in an interview. And women have constantly had to fight for a level playing field. And this change is a step in the right direction. As they use Viola Davis in The Woman King to sell this bullshittity to black women. Who may neutralize economically. To go and fight their war that they're not sending their kids off to. And this change is a step in the right direction, says Becky. Waltz argues that were a crisis requiring a draft to emerge, the United States would need every available person. Of course they would. You done killed off most of the men. The country would need everybody, man, woman, gay, straight, any religion, black, white, brown, he said recently on the House floor. According to Hulahan, she and Waltz paired up on the amendment out of a shared belief that Congress would change the current outdated way of thinking about things. Waltz is a former Army Green Beret who served in Afghanistan. Houlihan spent 17 years in the Air Force and Air Force Reserves, leaving as a captain. Democrats seem united on making the change. Republican clans are split. Okay, let me go back. Oh, it keeps jumping. But a critical mass seems to now favor it. Representatives Liz Cheney of Wyoming, Jack Bergman of Michigan, and Pat Fallon of Texas all voted in favor of the amendment when it came up at the Armed Services markup last month. Okay, I'm done reading this bullshit. It's making me ill. I just want you to understand, family, before I come to your comments, screw two. I want you to understand that it's all political. Hollywood, the Democrats, and the corporate lamestream media, and the government are all in bed together. And their target, since we fought and won our emancipation, and we refused to leave the country like uh, Abe Lincoln was trying to force us to expatriate out the country once they use our ancestors as the shoes to make it the wealthiest country in the free world there has been nothing but ethnogenocidal plan at the ethnogenocidal plan to finish us off and they're doing it through a fighting for abortion instead of uh, giving us the reparations so we can afford to keep our children and care for our children. They're doing it through the private prison industrial complex to warehouse our men, half of which are nonviolent offenders, some of whom are locked up for life over a nickel bag of funk while most states turn a profit and won't allow American freedmen to own these marijuana dispensaries. They're doing it by laying off and firing about 200,000 American freedmen teachers all throughout the country and putting in instead POC and POC white supremacists and white white supremacists to miseducate us. And now they want to talk about having guns in the classrooms and guns on the school premises, AR-15s and carrying on for the mass shooters, which are them. But how's that gonna go when uh, Tyrone's mama's working five jobs just to keep a roof over his head and the streets is raising him and he pop off to the teacher and she's on. So these teachers are in place to continue to disrupt and destroy the black family, get our kids caught up in the foster care system, which gets them caught up in um, in, in uh, sex trafficking and organ harvesting. They're doing it by using our reparations and protections on immigrants, lining their own pockets with our reparations 
ignoring the atrocities and not bringing in FEMA when we've got water crises uh, specifically designed for our communities like Flint, Mississippi, now Baltimore. And all they want to do is sit up here and convince you or we the people that Trump's mean tweets makes him more racist than Joe Crow. I don't care whether you like him or hate him. He was, in my opinion, the lesser of two evil. He didn't open up the floodgates on this immigration to uh, gentrify us up out of our communities. He didn't start a war with Russia using Ukrainian neo-Nazis. He gave money to the HBCUs, unakin to Joe Crow, who's got us fighting with Latinos over this little bit of Skrilla for our HBCUs, which have always been underfunded. And nothing has stopped. There's not been an end to qualified immunity under these uh, Dixiecrats in the Democrat Party. We're still being executed with impunity on our black men, women, and children. We've got the lowest salaries, can't afford to even become homeowners. You got white high school dropouts and immigrants that are replacing us in the workforce from the low level to the executive levels. And yet 86% of our electorate voted this in instead of giving them their walking papers. So no one has convinced me that voting to replace an over racist in office of four years with no record against American freedmen. I didn't see Trump earmark $37 billion to Congress to bring in more race soldiers in our communities. An overt racist in office of four years with no record against American freedmen with racist plural in office, a combined 60 years with records against American freedmen several New York City blocks long. 86% of our electorate thought that a novel idea. Let me see what my... Have mercy. Let me see what y'all got to say about it. I And I can pray us out. Yep. The ones that are coming over here (laughs) from Africa are the ones that descend from slave traders. Um... What's up, Sister Angela? Let's see here. How have you been? Oh, blessed and unstoppable family. Still trying to get more comrades on my side with my protest vote. I keep telling y'all, for those of you that are are new here, uh, if we stay home, like many in the new black media are supporting, Uh, We are going to leave the fate of our lineage in the hands of immigrants who seek to replace us and the POC black and white supremacists who hate us down to their baby toe. Because they're turning out to these polls to keep more of our Skrilla flowing their way and to keep more of our protections flowing their way to our peril. So I totally disagree. No tangibles, no vote. That campaign is reckless. And you're going to see more of the same (laughs) when they go out here and vote for the Democrats to stay in power. That's what you're going to see more of. It's going to get worse. And we got two more years of Joe Crow. So it's going to be bad enough. But that's what you get if you stay home because they're turning out in droves to guarantee that our reparations and protection stay flowing their direction. So I'm saying, tangibles, you ain't got nothing coming unless you bring the Democrats to their knees for several election cycles. 
till times get better for American freedmen. And the repugnant class don't owe you. They don't owe you nothing. Because you are not their lapdogs. You are not their loyal voter base. Y'all should be tired of these Democrats giving American freedmen their ass to kiss. It's constant. Hi, Rule Trackers. I see you. Nice CL, The Rock. Sister, just let it all out and don't hold back. <laughs> Never do. I love Screw Tube over Twitter. Okay, Lisa, I see you, family. I love you too, fam. Black and strong. I'm trying to get to the most pertinent uh, comments, y'all, because ain't nobody looking for no, no here from Africa. Okay, The Rock. No, I, I like the States. I've traveled. I've not been to Africa. I'm sure it's very lovely, but I like being near my people. Go ahead, Professor. Uh, Professor Smiles, bless the mic. His hand is up. Okay. Oh, there he is. Hey, hey how you doing? How you doing, sister? Thank you again for this wonderful space. I just wanted to say hello to you and so hello to everybody in the room. Um, I'm just listening. I won't say anything else other than that. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Thank you for blessing the mic. I'm just going to read these comments because my chat gets lit. <laughs> and I want to read it to y'all and respond in kind. The Hi, Phoenix Star. I see, you, I see all y'all over in Twitter space. I'm grateful to you for supporting my loud behind. But, you know, I'm just passionate, y'all. Okay, um, I'm going to read these comments. I'm going to pray us out so I can get some rest and come back tomorrow with more puckery. <laughs> uh, okay, Alabama Flint. Nicey says, Alabama Flint, Jackson, East St. Louis, the South Suburbs of Chicago, and Gary, etc. Anywhere you see a collection of American freedmen, you can see the environmental racist and the environmental racism that's going on that the feds refuse to bring in FEMA to fix it. They got money for everyone else. But this is by design. They are seeking to kill us off, to kill off the line by any means necessary. And y'all keep voting on it for it. You better wake up and smell your future. Hi, Carolyn. I see you, family. Uh, Africans want to fool us so that they trick us into moving back and to take our money. Well, I kind of agree with that, The Rock. You have to understand that we are still a resource for these Africans, okay? Whether you go to Africa or whether you're in this country, when you flatten blackness, they get to be your replacement. Shout out to C-Jack and, and everybody who helped to get us that data disaggregation where you have to identify now as an African-American who descends from U.S. chattel slavery or not. I imagine many of them will lie because that's what they do. They play both sides. All of these immigrants play both sides. They're POC when they got their hands out and want reparations, and they white as the driven snow when they want to distance themselves from our never-ending Holocaust and oftentimes participate in it. I see you, Root Trackers, by Yara. Let's see. I have reached, okay, Sister Angel, I've reached back through my research onto my maternal Benin lineage Dupu, Dupree, Dupree, and possibly Frank, Francois. Yes, yes, yes. Many of us, if we were to dig back, we would come to find out that we descend from uh, ancestors. Our line started in Benin, which was once Dahomey. That's where many of our ancestors were traded from. Root trackers. Okay. Hi, BB. I see you, fam. Salute. Thank you. Angela, are you talking about a military draft? Yes, The Rock. The article I read you was them preparing to draft women for an impending war. Now, they've not made it official yet, but like I said with Hollywood, with Congress, 
These are a peek into your future. When you see Hollywood creating a bunch of movies about badass women that behave like men and move like men and want to take a gun or a machete or whatever, you see an agenda that's forecasting what's coming. I just tied it back to Congress intent on drafting women in the name of making things fair and equitable. And for me, this particular woman, King, is feeding into that narrative to make it appear that Black women want this as much as white women, which is not the truth. Black women want their Black husbands in the home to help them raise their children. But that's not the left-leaning liberal agenda. It doesn't fit their agenda to ethnogenocide us and extinct us right about this piece as we are around 60 million. We are far more in number than what they purport. You see, if you don't know the truth about your numbers, you will believe that you lack the power to get organized and stage a protest vote, stage a boycott of their agendas. Like I said, I ain't got no problem with the Black Panther or coming to America because that was fiction. It was fiction. But when it comes to Harriet Tubman, when it comes to the woman king, I got issues because my ancestors, that's where my line was traded from. So it's personal. Yes, yeah, so I'm actually talking about the draft. Okay, so I see you, DJ PD News and Music. Just like I didn't go to see the Harriet Tubman movement movie, I'm not going to go see The Woman King either. That's what's up. Listen, I'm saying if you go, why not take a little piece of what I read to you and print it on there and pass it out to the people because they don't have a clue. They're just going to go out there and be met, leave men and white folks like we always do, whether they're making them the heroes or the villain, because it has to feed into uh, the Trump and the, in the, in the uh, what was it, January 6th, the siege on the Capitol and all this kind of carrying on. They need you to feed into that, to be afraid. They want you to be more afraid of a fake, Trump boogeyman that ain't done none to you. They want you to be more afraid of that than um, you are afraid to be neutralized economically and have no social justice. They want you to sheep walk back to the polls to keep them in power because you're more afraid of Trump than you are your own extinction, than you are your own replacement, than you are your own peril. So the movie's got perfect timing. Back to the chat. Dahomey, okay, so here is BB. Dahomey tribesmen were strategic slave traders kidnapping their own countrymen and tribesmen, selling them to Europeans 1650 to 1880. Correct, BB, no lies, detective fam. Angela Facts, go there. Yes, sis. You teach people how to treat you. Absolutely. That's what I was saying. The colonizers wouldn't know how to mistreat us in this country if it wasn't happening first in Africa as they sit up here and pretend to be innocent. Oh, we didn't know chattel slavery was going to be as bad as it was. We didn't mistreat our slaves like that. You see what happens when you don't know your history? They can lie and tell you anything they want you to know. They can distort your history. They can literally erase your history. You see some semblance of it's happening already. Italians and Latinos and uh, Caribbeans taking credit for hip hop. All men are little ways in these microaggressive ways. When you've been neutralized economically, you don't have the voice to fight these narratives. And what about our children who go to see this and don't know the involvement of Africa and how we got here? Just constantly lying. So now you've got to educate your kids 
before you let them go see the movies. They can tell you any manner of thing. And you must teach people how to treat you. And everything is politics. Dominique Henderson, San Francisco is allowing Ukrainians to become law enforcement officers. No cap, y'all. Baby boo. Dominique, you ain't said nothing but a word. That's going to be happening. That's why they allow them in as refugees. They're neo-Nazis. Of course, they want to replace the KKK that might be dying off on the police forces. You got many Americans that don't even want those jobs. So, of course, the refugees want those jobs with uh, $37 billion coming from Congress or greater to hire them in our communities with militarized tanks and AR assault rifles and carry it on to blow us to kingdom calm, unarmed black men, women, and children. Because we will still be the ones that they're targeting, even if they're flooding our cities with illegals. They can see the difference. Real beautiness 25, you're going to grow and grow in the name of Black Jesus, baby. Let's hope so. <laughs> oh, please like, share, subscribe. Oh, child, the ghetto. Turn on your notifications. I always forget to do that. But you reminded me, my love. I thank you for your kind words. I need to grow and grow and grow, but screw tube is what they call shadow banning me. That's the word. They're shadow banning me. They're shutting down my channel for any reason. Just pick one. So y'all got to be the ones to help me become relevant. My voice needs to be heard. And I'm going to keep going hard in the paint every day that I can. I was missing an action last week. Because I didn't feel like this drama and trauma on my birth week. My birthday was September the 1st. And I have been turning up ever since. And that's why y'all didn't see me last week. Because I didn't feel like it. I didn't feel like being mad on my birthday. And I just decided I'm going to enjoy myself. And that's what I did. And I'll be at it all month. Because it ain't just a birthday for me. It's a birth month. When you start on the first, you got to go the whole 30 days. Or you ain't doing it right. <laughs> okay, baby. Happy birthday, Happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you so much. So, yeah, but I'll be here every day thereafter, unless it's a holiday. I rest on the holidays and on the weekend. Okay, let's see here. I think I jumped on my comments. Hi, Shirley Huzar. Oh, Shirley Huzar is in the building, y'all. Y'all know that's my sister from another mister. Okay, so there you go. I jumped. Okay, let's go back. Uh, BB goes on to say, New York City downtown projects have no water too. Arsenic found in the water on 9-2-22. Oh, Lord. This is what Dr. Claude Anderson's been telling y'all for 40 years. We can't fight every damn body. Oh, Lord. Let's see here. Uh, BB says, at the rock, hearts reminded by reality, shaking my head listening to Angela. <laughs> no, it's enough to just make you want to take to your bed and not get up. But we got to keep going. Family, we can't afford to give up in or out. We must lean in. And bring these Democrats to their knees for their intentional neglect of American freedmen descendant of U.S. chattel slavery. You must make them pay. Stop rewarding them. Go ahead, Professor. Bless the mic. Yes, uh, sister. I, I had said I wasn't going to speak on anything, but I, as we've been seeing, talking about all the issues that we're going through, I, uh, I've been reading up on this this representative Sheila Jackson Lee, <laughs> who's been posting all on her tweets about her helping the Pakistan, Pakistani people who I could care less about. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be mean, but <laughs> this woman is supposed to be a representative of ours as a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. And she's all over there in another land, foreign land, helping these people with, I think, I guess they had a flood over there or whatever, a tsunami or something. Um, 
But look at what's going on right here in your local United States where you represent, okay? In Jackson, Mississippi, and of course in the other areas, because we now know about New York. I think there's now reports coming out of Baltimore about some arsenic in, in the water there. So all these areas where predominantly Black, African Americans, Negroes, American descendants of slavery live, it's a, it's, it, this is not a coincidence that we got all these incidents that are popping up of arsenic in the water. So where is the Black leadership like Sheila Jackson Lee, who wants to put all her pictures all out there about what she's doing over in another land? instead of being here, taking care of the people that she's supposed to be representing, us, the American descendants of slavery. I, I land my plane there. Thank you, Professor, for blessing the mic. It's abhorrent what is happening with the congressional black carcasses, okay? It's abhorrent. I borrowed that from one of my comrades. I can't remember which one. Y'all so clever when you put it together like you do. The Congressional Black Carcasses. And where is Joe Crow? The 86% of our electorate voted into office. Where is FEMA? Where is Kabami? Where is, uh, you have my back, so I'm going to have yours. Where is all that? And this is what 86% of our electorate voted for. And this is what they're on the precipice of doing this midterm election. Either staying home because they believe that they're going to get tangibles for one of these parties. Which is never going to happen until you show the Democrats better than you can tell them what time it is. You must bring them to their knees. You continuing to vote blue no matter damn who. You ain't got tangibles yet. And you ain't got nothing coming until you bring them to their knees. Continuing to vote for them in this manner. Everybody needs their walking papers. Sheila Jackson Lee, everybody. Everybody needs to go. So you've got to find the closed border America first candidates in your state. Hold your nose and get to the polls. This ain't no joke. We are out of time. And you got folks pretending to be leaders in the reparations movement. They're marching you off a cliff when they tell you to vote them down the ballot. It's reckless. It's reckless to stay home when you got folks that want to replace you. I say get them out of here. Get them out. you got to. Your very survival, your very line, your very children and your grandkids and your great grandkids are looking to you to go to war since we already at war with our own government in every branch of every branch, local, state and, and federal. We are at war officially with the Democrats whom we keep voting for. If you can't find no closed border candidates, vote somebody third party. But get your booty to the polls. And save your line. Throw everybody else off the tit and save your line. Good Lord. Thank you, DJ Seguan. Please like, share, subscribe, turn on your notifications. Thumbs up for our sister, everyone. Yes. Thank you, Carolyn Quinn. I see you, fam. When you guys thumbs up, it helps the algorithms, not you, Twitter space. I know y'all can't do that over here. But when you're done over here, go thumbs it up. In the <laughs> when the tape renders, go thumbs it up. I love this from you, BB says this all the time. Being casual causes you to become a casualty. She quoting Les Brown up in this piece. It bears repeating. Being casual causes American freedmen to become a casualty. You must get out here 
and vote in your line's interest. You must do it. Both parties suck. What you must do first is defect from the Democratic Party. Go out here tomorrow or online tonight, whenever you can, and defect from the Democrats. You must file as an independent, and you must show up to the polls and do what the ancestors did. You must grow a backbone and the cojones to save the line by neutralizing our most imminent threat, immigration. You must do it. Because you ain't got no tangibles coming until the Democrats have to pay. That's it, and that's all. Why would they do anything different if you continue to vote for them? Why would they all of a sudden give you reparations and protections when they can get your vote for free? When they can get your vote while replacing you? When they can get your vote while extincting you? Don't make sense. Bibi says, how is that all these black cities having water problems? Sis! These are the Democrats' ethno-genocidal plans to replace an extinct American freedmen. That's why they're having water challenges. That's why they're hot, mad about us no longer being able to abort our babies in some states. That's why they won't put an end to qualified immunity. That's why they're flooding the country with illegals and giving them four-star hotels and leveling homeless encampments all throughout the country. That's why they're giving our reparations and protections to the Ukrainian neo-Nazis, to the Asians, to the Latinos, H-1B visas to the East Indian Brahmin caste. putting them in this country and putting them in power to become our new POC black, white supremacist oppressors. That's why we've been redlined into environmentally racist communities and tenement housing. Look around. The majority of these cities suffering water problems are democratically ran. BB says, I'm sad that Viola Davis signed onto it without properly researching. I'm, I, I believe that Viola knows better, but she's about the bag, the Skrilla, and the Oscar over the people. And it's very sad. It's tragic that she would choose this over the truth, over holding Hollywood accountable. But this is why you can't look to these celebrities to be our spokespersons, to be our saviors. We got, all we got is each other, y'all, in the grassroots. And we got to keep going till we're the loudest noise in the room until we see change. Dominique says to Roots Tracker, no joke, and more Black people already moving to Nevada or Arizona Black people getting pulled over by an officer that has an accent or doesn't speak English well at all, says Dominique about the Ukrainian neo-Nazis now being hired onto the police forces throughout the country. I told y'all, the Democrats. Root Tracker, Root Tracker says, at BB, I'm hoping that's the case, although that's careless. Is it possible Viola did do her research? Uh, Roots Tracker, I believe Viola is way too brilliant not to know the truth. And so what they do is they will infuse some of the truth, like they did with Harriet. They infuse some of the truth to make the lies more palpable. And they get these producers and directors on stages to... Uh, Slave traders splain all of it away. You understand? Because they got to protect white money's interest in government and keep us sheep walking to the polls in the name of hating white folks because you need to be afraid of the Trump boogeyman. You need to be afraid. He ain't done you none. He ain't done nearly a fraction. He ain't done nothing to you in compared to what we've done to you as the Democrats. Hello, Bill Clinton. 
with three Ks. Hello, Crooked Killery with three Ks. Hello, Joe Crow with three Ks. He ain't done you none what they did you, Barack Obama. He ain't done none of what they done you. But the only way to get you to sheep walk to the polls, continuing to vote blue no matter damn who, is to feed you these narratives to get you all in a lather over racism, over the Dixiecrats on both sides, on, on the Republican side. you supposed to ignore the Dixiecrats that are still on the Democrat side and, and, and buy into this stupid narrative that all oh, the Dixiecrats went to Republicans, Republicans. No, they didn't. Crooked Killery with three Ks was a Barry Goldwater girl. Hello, somebody. And Joe Crow with three Ks was Strom Thurmond's protege and eulogist. So yeah, Viola and most of Hollywood knows the truth. Their neglect of us is intentional. They are paid to keep us oppressed. And we, this does not stop until we stop supporting it. We are still, I want to say 86% of the blacks in this country. The black immigrants are now around 14%. So while we still have the numbers, imagine if we did not support this bullshiggity. Would this not send the strongest message? Then we're not paying for you to fictionalize our Holocaust. You don't do this to nobody else's history but American freedmen. And this is what keeps us ignorant about the truth of what really happened to us. And it keeps us divided. Because folks don't look at me crazy. Why is she telling us to go out here and vote for closed border America first candidate? Why is she sitting over in here talking about boycott the woman king? I've been waiting to see that movie. It looks epic. Because of course they poured a ton of money into it. Because they know that American freedmen are emotional. They'd rather dream than get out here and fight for their very line's life. Let us just dream. Tell the truth, my sister. No lies detected. Thank you, DJ PD. Um, yes, it's careless. This film is based on actual events. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yes, BB. The part about the women being warriors is actual. Okay, but they don't talk about the women warriors protecting the king and how they murdered and slaughtered the heads, took the heads off their own people. It took Barracoon to tell that story. Okay, Zora Neale Hurston told that story. You must get the book. It's on Audible, so you can drive and listen, and it's in hard copy. I ordered both. Okay, so yes, they like to hide the truth in plain sight. But what they're doing that's different, not even different, it's the same playbook. Demonize the white man as if all of this heinous chattel slavery started with him and not Africa. That way, when an African is, is up for election for something, you won't know the truth of what they descend from. You won't realize that you're voting for a descendant of slave traders. You'll sheep walk to the polls and vote them into office like we did Barack and Obama. Who was a no on reparations and a champion of LGBTQIA XYZ rights, as well as uh, he was the founder of the Office of the New Americas for immigrants. Not the Office of Freedman Affairs. The Office of the New America. How is there a new America when you ain't dealt with the old America? We were here before America was even formed. We built this country. Our ancestors built it with their lives. But Barack Obama want to skip right on over American freedmen reparations and make up an Office of New Americas for our replacements. It's in the intro. 
It's in the intro of my um broadcast. BB says they're over there fighting now. They stay in a perpetual state of war in Africa. Garon Rose, welcome to the live. They sold their people as slaves, and this is still going on right now. Uh, it's still going on here, too, in Mississippi. What's the name of that documentary um, that I was pushing y'all to watch? Oh, my God. If anybody knows the name, bring it to my re remembrance. But, yeah, they, they were down there doing a documentary in Mississippi about the slavery still going on. And a sister of 60 years, she was a slave up until, well, she was 60 at the time she told it, but she was a slave. And she talked about the horrors in that documentary, the cotton picking truth. The cotton picking truth is going to outline how Congress knows while Obama was in office about the slavery still going on in Mississippi. <laughs> the rock said ninja ain't nobody going to africa <laughs> we show sure ain't enjoy yourself bruh <laughs> so sad that bb we need to let her know what we know on her social media roots trackers i let her know what i know as have other people who've been chiming in and sharing what i've been sharing with her she's not dignifying me with a response and i don't expect she will that's why I had to come over here and do my own thing. Y'all know me. You've been here long enough. I've been over here since November 2019. <sighs> when it when it when it sticks in my craw, I gotta give y'all a call to action. And my call to action on this is boycott. And your, your next call to action is to go out there with flyers with the truth of the homie and talk about what these women did. Take an excerpt, it's on the Atlantic, right on Google. You can cut and paste that section and give it to the people to educate. Defect for the Democratic Party and vote closed border and reparations candidates only. Party be damned. We okay, BB says, do we know? Do we know if she did the research? I don't want to assume. However, again, the movie is semi-autobiographical. Um, yeah, there are, like I said, they they like to hide the truth. And, and give you some semblance of the truth and fictionalize the rest. I think it's imperative that we know what Africa did because Africa set the stage for how we were treated thereafter. I think that needs to be told. I think they need to address that in the, the woman king or don't do it. Go ahead and make up another Wakanda or another coming to America. Don't use the homie. Call them something else the way they should have done with Harriet. Call it something else. BB says it would be powerful if she would address our people's betrayal. Yes, it would have been more powerful. But they won't do that because that's not politically expedient. Remember, everything is political, fam. Dominique says, brother, speak up and talk with your chest. Damn, I can hardly hear you. Oh, <laughs> He, he was a little soft. I, I had it on Bluetooth speaker trying to let y'all hear. But he was his volume was kind of low on his end. Hello, Shelly. How are you, says Carolyn Quinn. Okay, DJ PD says, I'm not fleeing because my ancestors built America with three Ks. And I was born here. Fleeing is not an option. Well, you see, DJ PD, they're used to fleeing, right? The Africans fled their Holocaust to tether themselves to our never ending Holocaust to climb right up over our backs because they're in bed with the white supremacist. Not all, there's some exceptions. But yeah, uh, they fled their Holocaust to attach themselves to our never ending Holocaust because we stay in fight and we still fighting. We just got more to fight now. There's so much more to fight constantly. The Rock says, I ain't spending my money and watching that filth woman king. Uh, the Rock, I'm with you on that. I'm not, I'm not going to participate in the lies because what ends up happening is just like with the Harriet movie, 
I had to tell my daughter the truth. Not that I don't, I don't mind telling her the truth, but it's a damn shame that she can't show up like a Jewish person and just see her Holocaust played out truthfully. All these agendas, I told you, this is about the upcoming midterms. In the perfect timing, they are weaponizing white supremacy to get y'all scared running to the polls to keep them in office come the midterms while not offering us a damn thing in exchange for the vote. And when you show up and do that, just know you're voting for your own replacement and the end to your line. We will become as extinct and as, as few in number as the Indians if we don't come up with a protest vote. And we need to vote. Otherwise, the immigrants who want to replace you and the POC black white supremacists in this country who hate us and want us dead. So you got to get revolutionary and radical. You just must. You must weaponize your vote since they're weaponizing our Holocaust every time you turn around to give everybody else to come up. They'll show up and talk about our Holocaust and give reparations to everybody but us. Y'all should be tired of being used. BB says, I will say this, she promoted child hunger. And with that, I don't know where her loyalty lies. She may feel like any of her success is a come up. Oh, I don't know who you're talking about, Bay. Oh, Arivo. Cynthia Arivo, we don't know her Nigerian lineage. She had no business playing that role. Well, being Nigerian, if you look up the Wall Street Journal, there's an article that says my great-grandfather was a slave trader. More than likely, the Africans you see in this country descend from slave traders. You cannot be Black in this country if you don't have money. Now, that may have been the case in the beginning of the Immigration Act around 65, but they're not importing poor Blacks. They're bringing in poor Latinos to replace us. So more than likely, Erivo, being Nigerian, descends from slave traders, as do most Africans in this country, I would venture to say. DJPD. News and music, I second that notion. This is our home and land, not theirs. Absolutely, family. And we've got to become territorial. And we've got to be about this lineage. And you can't feel ashamed about looking out for American freemen descendant of U.S. chattel slavery first. Because we got here on the bottom with no strategy in place. We didn't strategize the vote. And we didn't weaponize our Holocaust in the way that we should have. We, we've been sheep walking. I was with y'all until Obama. Then I had to go educate myself. And so you can't be afraid of the names you will be called. I voted dim down the ballot and was still called the Trump supporter. Okay? You can't be afraid of the name calling. They call me xenophobe, homophobe. You can't be afraid of all that. You've got to stand up with your chest and fight for your line or it's over. You can't flee your Holocaust. You've got to finish this fight until the reparations is won and the protections are won and an end to qualified immunity. You, this is our fight. We got to pick up the mantle. It just is what it is. Use your gifts and talents to stay in the fight because your kids are relying on you to do it. Uh, go to Africa for what? When they running over here, it's a dupe. Yes, BB. They want, oh, go ahead, Professor. Uh, bless the mic. Thank you again, Sister Reparationist. Um, I just want to say, I remember back when I was a young boy growing up, my mom and me were having to talk about being a young black male growing up in America. And one of the things she said to me that I never forget, because my mom passed away in 2001, so I reflect a lot on conversations that we had. Um, one of the things that she said to me is that this country is never going to respect the black man, no matter what his status is, 
no matter what he does that's righteous, no matter what he does that's good, or whatever he does for his family, whatever he does for his community, none of this is going to be respected. So she said integration was really the worst thing that could have happened to us. Yes. It, it really did a lot to hurt us because it took away the community. It took away our own businesses that we had. It took away a lot from us because we wanted so bad to assimilate in with these people. And we thought that we had become equal to these people once we started getting jobs and certain things. We, we kind of felt like, okay, racism is over. We started sleeping. And when I was listening to you, sister, uh, reparation is about when you said sleepwalking, that, that took me back to what she said, because she said we went to sleep with integration. Because we thought that we had it made, baby. We, we could get into the, the nicest neighborhoods and we could get some cars and, and we could get some nicer clothes from some of these um, predominantly white stores and businesses all around the place. You know, we just thought we had it made. The whole time, the caucasoids, as I like to call them, were plotting all kinds of ways they were going to get us. So they just knew, oh yeah, we'll give them integration, we'll give them that. But we're going we're gonna to do some other things behind the scenes to make sure that we hurt them, no matter what. And that's what they've been doing, because we've been sleepwalking. I just I land my plane there, but I just wanted to say that because that was one of the words she used, sister. I'm and I'm glad you said that because it took me back. Thank you so much for blessing the mic, fam. I yeah, that's what we've been doing. We've been duped. They got us pretending like there's something to return to in Africa. And one of my illustrious comrades who just joined, I see you fam, who's been to Africa many times, has told me that most of West Africa where that brother was calling in from, he sounded like American Freedman to me. He said he's from the States, he sounded American Freedman. He was in West Africa, but by and large, we're still being used as the shoes. We're still being used as the resource. They want us to come over there to take what we've got and not give us the uh, rights to citizenship, and it's gonna take you 100 years before you can own any damn thing, okay? They're not gonna give you reparations, they're not gonna give you land, but they're gonna have these big uh, propagandized, grifting kind of ceremonies that, that sound like the great return, like they about to roll out the red carpet for you, please. You might get a daishiki, but you're going to be charged a premium to even go to the slave castles, okay? So please don't be duped out of your citizenship here, trying to run over there thinking something's going to be different for you as an American freedman. They see dollar signs when they see you coming, and they mark up everything accordingly. You're going to definitely pay more to see what your folks was had to hold out six months to be traded into slavery to get on them ships to the point of no return where folks like the dahomey these women warriors were protecting that king and making sure they could raid those villages for the least of us behead us in the whole nine yard if we didn't comply and get on them ships for their guns and their wealth which they enjoy to this day which their descendants bring to this country and replace us in every industry and in politics. And they go tell you to get over slavery when you're still living your never ending Holocaust as a byproduct of your enslavement. So don't be duped and don't fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Uh, BB, you said they yanked the banker yet this may go through. I don't know what that means unpack that says i don't know if that's confirmed it would be good to know 
the banker. Oh, 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 oh. You talk about the movie, The Banker. Oh, no, baby boo. You can watch The Banker family on Apple TV. I don't know if it's still up there, but it, you must watch The Banker. Oh, my God. It was rich. They didn't get that yanked. I watched it on Apple TV. So, yeah, you can go check that out. It was powerful. Okay. I remember about that child hunger at B.B. Rodriguez. These folks, stay exposing themselves. I don't know what they talking about right there. 71-year-old Friedman descended one casino jackpot and bank. And the bank won't let her deposit a check in her account. People, we have a problem that must end now. Oh, my God, you talking about something altogether different. I thought you were talking about the movie The Banker. <laughs> I don't even know if that was the name of it now. Did y'all hear this fuckery? A 71-year-old freed woman, Friedman descendant, I don't know. Yeah, freed woman descended, won a casino jackpot, and the bank won't let her deposit the check into her account. Family? It's time to bring the Democrats to their knees. I don't trust these actors, actresses, singers, or rappers. Many sell the F out in our shills. Yes, Roots Trackers. Correct. That book was heavy in my bedroom library. Um, Who won't let the elder Friedman cash the casino check? <laughs> oh, y'all just going all the way left. So now you can have a certified check not accepted by an elder Friedman, not acceptable. It's unbelievable. So there's a, an unnamed bank in Livonia, Michigan, where they won't let the sister cash her casino check. Uh-oh, Angela, took care of that arse. <laughs> I don't know who I took care of. Shirley says, preach. Y'all know I was born to talk. Take your time, sis. Thank you. Okay, BB's bringing up another point. 12 and a half million trafficked West Africans, our ancestors were enslaved and betrayed and then resold to European nine Western countries, 1593 to 1880. 36,000 recorded slave trafficking voyages. BB always bringing the smoke and the fire. Kasula was rare because he came after slavery was abolished, 1834. Yes, but it was abolished, but they were still trading, fam. <laughs> That's what's so, oh my God. It was abolished, but they were still trading and we're still enslaved. The cotton picking truth, you must watch it and be mortified. We're still enslaved in Mississippi, and the Congress knows it. I want to know what bank that is to call and comment on their social media all day, every day. Fifth Third Bank family call to action. BB's on it. Fifth Third Bank will not allow the freed woman to cash her casino check in Livonia, Michigan. Fifth Third Bank, we need to blow the phones off the hook. I'm calling tomorrow. Thank you very much, BB, says Roots, track, Roots Trackers 100. Hi, Satra Delry 360. <laughs> I see you, fam. Negro land. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Facts. Okay, I'm just jumping to the most pertinent ones. I got to pray y'all out. I had y'all over here over two hours now. The Afrikaans betrayal created the aberrations you see in our people. No lies detected, BB. Garone Rose, they are to blame and they want to be blameless. That's why they keep lying and pointing fingers at the uh, colonizers. They were they taught the colonizers how to mistreat and abuse us. Thanks, Doc. Preach. Yeah, she talking about Trump. <laughs> yes, that's Shirley's party. I hear you, fam. I ain't, listen, I'm independent, but I'm sure enough going to uh, do my protest vote till times get better for American freedmen. 
I don't care. If we're going to be at war, let's go to war. Like Tony Montana said. You want a war? I can't even do it like him. But let's go to war. I'm sick and tired of American freedmen descendant of U.S. chattel slavery being the only ones in distress when the Democrats have a trifecta. Let's go to war. Because we at war. Whether you weaponize your vote or not, we are officially at war since Joe Crow took office. He done let about 3 million of these illegals in this country while you were sleeping. Okay? So please, miss me with it. I'm closing these borders. No, uh, Sasha says no to Harriet, woman king. Nope. Watch out for these immigrant director and writers changing Friedman's narratives. That's what they're doing. Sacha Delry 360. No lies detected. You everywhere, my brother, says Carolyn. Off to you. Hats off to you. Appreciate your assistance. That's <laughs> DJ Seguan. Spitting truth to power, sister Angela. Exactly, and Satra. 100 hearts and fire, says Shirley. Y'all lit over here. Lord have mercy. I don't think I'm at. Okay, it's 812. We'll be here all night with y'all in these comments. Listen, family. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me live. I need you to make this go viral. Folks need to see this. If you do go to the studio, your call to action is to take flyers. You can copy and paste from the Atlantic about um, what really happened with Cujo. Um, he, he, that little segment, that little piece I read, y'all. Or you can go to, um, let's see here. There's another article. Zora Neale Hurston highlights unpopular narratives in Barracoon. You can also, um, I shared this in the Twitter space too, that segment where he talked about the Dahomey women warriors beheading everyone and, and, and just raiding uh, their villages at night. And if you didn't go, they would behead you and set your head afire. Oh my God, it's, it's graphic. You should also get the book Barracoon. Uh, Jerush, Jerushom uh, Yasharala took forever to get to get this to load. Oh my God, that's screwed too, darling. Okay, well, y'all got a ton more comments. You guys can watch the playback over on ScrewTube and read the rest of these amazing comments. Most slaves were from Benin, Congo, Senegal, Ghana, Ivory Coast, Nigerians were used to capture other Africans. They were paid to do it. There's now 12 departments of Benin. I was able to go to Porto Novo, Queme, Benin. Wonder how close or far that is from Dumas. I'm a professional genealogist. Oh my God, Roots Tracker. Sister Angela, I'm a professional genealogist. Roots Trackers is the name, AKA Learning DNA Genealogy. What's up, Roots Tracker? You guys check out Roots Trackers with the K-E-R-Z. They're over in the chat. Okay, family. So with that being said, uh, Lord knows they still going. These people over here, just like y'all in Twitter space, can go all night. I'm going to end this old Shirley Usar's 100 Hearts and Fires. Okay. Hold on, sis. Hold on, sis. Oh. Like you said, you was born to talk. So where you think we get it from? Don't be trying to oh. roll out on this all quick. Somebody requested to speak. Oh my God. I didn't even see. <laughs> Hold on. Okay. Who's this respecting to speak? Go ahead. Raise your hand. Now, this DJ, I'm just playing with you, sis. You know, oh. I, I said, I said, I said that you be saying that you was born to speak. <laughs> so don't add us talk about we writing all these comments now. Don't leave us all that quick. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I see America. Oh, but, but, but look, yeah, now you got a hand up. See that? So now you got to say See, look what you moment. did. Look what you did. Okay, come on, American. Bless the mic. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Uh, I'm 100% with you. I'm not about to play with the Democrats. Not at all. Never again. I don't think I'll probably ever vote again for them. Something has to change. I say let the sucker burn down. We are foolish to believe and holding on to something that is going to be the death of us. We are on life support. Everybody understands this. We also, too, play this pan-Africanist mess that has really harmed us, and there's no future in that. Not only that, we play the pan-Africanist with everybody. 
you know, we really promote and push these other groups forward to be the greatest that they can be. They're eating excellently. I am in Missouri and in Kansas as well. I'm looking like it's a lot of them. There's too many. And for them to be so disrespectful, talking about the Democratic Party, talking about the Black Caucus, and the sad thing about the Black Caucus is majority of those people are not us. That's very telling to see our caucus not be our caucus. The the gig is up. And notice how the um, caucus is doing the benign neglect now. I've seen a tweet, and I'll land here. I've seen a tweet from um, Uncle Luke, as we call him. He ain't nobody uncle, but we call him Uncle Luke. He, and then we had Frederica, which is with the Black Caucus, and she's not, she's an immigrant, I believe, as well. And we had the prime minister of um, the not the Bahamian prime minister, I think, yes. And in that tweet, this fool is going to say, look, watch everybody get mad about this. They ain't going to like this. And then tag Marcel in this. These people are blatantly being funny. They know what the hell they're doing to us. They're antagonizing us. They're sitting at, the bo- at our boards. They are final decision makers. What happened in California is happening around the nation. And the only reason why I believe that California got got that work is because we came in in droves. We had people from Missouri, Hawaii, Wyoming, Northern Southern California, all around the country, and some calling in from other places around the world that is stationed other places. And we rolled up on them. And they was not accepting that. If they could have did that stuff in private, that stuff would have went a different way. They hear our hurt, they hear our pain, they see our tears, they don't give a doggone. This is a business, and what we fail to realize, like them the homie women, is that this is business. We always show that love and want to hug and start singing Christmas carols and stuff, but what I don't know, these people have never had a connection with us. I'm not trying to be funny, Puerto Ricans have never had a connection with us. Mexicans have never, other Africans, other people around the world have, haven't had the common connection that we fantasize about. We're so foolish, we, we have a million dollars in our pocket and lay down with these folks and wake up broke without anything. These suckers, these folks will lay down with us broke without nothing, without status, without prestige, without any doggone thing and stand up and be over our institutions. They're working with prestige. They're working with that million dollars that you had in your pocket, in their pocket. They are over our stuff and they're able to have the last say so. Shame on us. Let this mother burn. It's not going to help you anyway. Be smart enough to get the hell out of this house the Martin Luther King said he led us into. He even said it before he died off. He knew he wasn't going to make out of that, that damn going to burn the house. And we were fucking, I'm sorry, we were foolish enough to still want to be in that bad boy. Something's mentally wrong with us if we continue allowing this. Thank you for allowing me to speak. And I'm about to lay down. Thank you. I mean, we could just pass the plate on that sister right there. Oh my God, let me give you a follow. Oh my God, Miss American, where have you been all my life? That was. I can't say my name on here. This is me. I'm going to tell you who I am. Uh... You sound you <laughs> sound very familiar to me, too. I'm going to tell you who I am. So I tell Shirley, I said, hi. She wants you to know my voice. She probably know who I am. Like, okay. But yes. Oh my God. I, I Oh my God, I know this voice and you just spit fire. I can end on that note, truly. <laughs> I can just go to bed too. Cause Lord knows I need to lay down after hooping and hollering for two hours. Well, y'all, while uh, America was speaking, I was just sitting up here uh, putting y'all's little comments as much as I could flash it on the screen. So it, it will get a, a note, a notoriety in the broadcast today. Oh, with that being said, family, y'all know I'm going to come back tomorrow and light it up again. I hope y'all come back and play with me. Uh, I hope y'all come back and learn more about why you need to continue making the case for reparations. Y'all need to stay on their jugular with this one here. Y'all need to stay on their jugular. Uh, making the case for reparations, making the case for weaponizing our votes, socializing our suffering. And if you're just over here, to grow the courage, that's cool too. 
because I'm here to make that case every day, you know, except on the weekends, I need to take a break. Of course, I took a break last week. It was my birthday. And thank you for all the love in the space. I thank you, Twitter space. I thank you, ScrewTube. I thank you, Racebook. I thank you, regular Twitter live stream over there. I know y'all watching too. And I'm grateful to each and every one of you. And with that being said, family, I mean, like I said, America shut it down with them comments. She was absolutely telling the TR group, telling it like a TI is, okay? So with that being said, I'm going to pray us out that the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever Freeman and his allies are, God truly is. Because family, you are the face of God. You are the voice of God. You are the body temple of the spirit of the living God. If no one's told you today how much they love you, know that I love you. Oh, so black and oh, so strong. Yes, I do. Until we meet again tomorrow, family, for the Lord. As a reparation is perspective, I want you to make it a beautiful, God-inspired rest of your evening. Until then, family, I'm wishing for each and every one of us a ton of peace, love, and reparations, reparations, reparations. I'm out.